All right, gang, Professor McElroy here. Uh, 22 May, Web Design 1, we're into Learning Module 3, which is week three of four weeks of Web Design 1. Uh, good job so far. We only have 10 students in the course, which is really nice because I normally have 20 students in this course. So everyone is doing pretty well. Everyone, easily over half, are almost just about done the three learning modules worth of work. So that's really awesome. Remember, I'm not a stickler on the due dates. As long as you're working on the projects and you're learning some skills that meet the outcomes of the course. Some students have been emailing me, said they've been out of town and just had a few things come up. I'm perfectly fine with that. As long as you're communicating with me, you don't drop off the face of the earth. I don't have any idea where you are for two and a half weeks. And then you're like, can you help me catch up? That's not going to be as easy to do. Um, but I know life gets in the way. So just keep plugging along. Some projects you might get real quickly. Other projects might take you a little bit longer. You might get stuck. You might have to send an email, right? We're going to work through it. Don't give up. Just keep plugging through it. You're, you're more than likely not going to love everything about web design unless you are really interested in web design. But the skills that we're learning in this class, I think, are really important technology skills that you'll be able to apply in your future career, whether you're an IT student or your business or marketing, health and uh, information management. Everyone interacts with technology. So even just understanding how to pr problem shoot some basic code, understanding how the web works, understanding how we share data from device to device is very important. I understand not everyone is gonna get everything. I understand it's gonna take a little time for some things to click over other things, but let's just keep plugging along, keep trying the skills, keep exploring. Everyone has submitted the movies.zip file with the pages completely modified and they look great. Some have really run crazy with it, changed the font on the header, changed the colors, put some background images in there, really played around with the HTML. And I'm happy to see that because that's how you learn. You can't really break it, right? You can always go back to the source file, copy it, put it back in your folder and play around with it again, right? If it's a project that you're doing in the book and something isn't working with one of your files, try just pulling the file from the zip file again, putting it back in your folder, replacing the other file with the new original file and try the process again. It happens where dot extensions get attached to files where it isn't reading it correctly. Sometimes you just miss save it or something. So it has a weird encoding format on it. Things do happen. So if you try several times and you start to get a little bit of a hiccup, try the source file again. See if you can skip some of the steps and go to the step you were stuck on and just see if the file will do what you want it to do for the step that you got stuck on. Sometimes even I just have to delete a file, reintroduce a new file and play around with it a little bit, right? We're dealing with technology. Technologies, I mean, they happen. They, every once in a while there's a hiccup or something gets damaged or something doesn't get saved right. Uh, so keep plugging along. I'm really happy with the 10 students in the class. Everyone is editing HTML, they're building custom pages. Everyone's kind of getting the process going, understanding the process and that sort of thing. So I think everyone is grabbing a little nugget from our outcomes of the course. This week, we're not touching web, we're not touching Dreamweaver at all. We're gonna use web tools. We're gonna use cloud-based tools. We're gonna go out and build a website using our web browser, which you know what that means. You don't need Dreamweaver. All you need is an internet connection. All you need is a browser. You don't need your own software. You don't need your own plugins. You don't need your own editor. You don't need any of those things, which means you can design on your phone. You can design on a tablet. You can design on any device that has internet access and a web browser. And that's a pretty cool thing. And another pretty cool thing when you use web or cloud-based tools is there's lots of plugins and and tools attached to these kinds of applications that allow you to do all kinds of neat things. I mean, WordPress even has its own app on your phone. And once you build your website with WordPress, you can actually post an update and add to your site right from their app. You don't even have to go into the browser or anything. Their app controls the entire dashboard of your website. So that is pretty cool. And the beauty about web tools for web design WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, there's a bunch of them out there. The beauty about these tools are if you're working with a client, 
who does not have the budget to have a web designer on staff, or there's an administrative assistant, or maybe the owner of the business wants to manage it, but they have very little technical background. Tools like these are beautiful because you can expose the client, build the site for them, give them a little bit of feedback, hand it off, and then they can continue. I actually just did this process using WordPress for Keep Lee County Beautiful. It's a local nonprofit. It's tied to Keep America Beautiful. They had a horrendous website. They wanted to add an events calendar. They wanted to be able to post from social media. They wanted to be able to update their website easily, but they are a staff of three. They have a director, they have an events coordinator, and they have a person that helps go to communities to do litter pickup and things, different events and stuff like that. They literally have three people on staff. They don't have a web designer. They don't have the ability to have a web designer. They don't know anything about web design. So working with the director, I helped them build a WordPress site. And from the WordPress site, I was able to teach them some basic tools to build and manage their own website. The worst thing for a web designer is building a website and have to manage it. I don't want to manage it. When I build websites for clients and they average between three and $5,000 per website, I want to build it, hand it off and be done with it. And if they need me to build later, I charge them $125 an hour. So I want to build and hand off. I don't want to build and babysit. So as much of the process, I can hand off to them. So even if I build a website in Dreamweaver using Bootstrap, it's responsive, it's beautiful. I'll embed a plugin kind of like a blog. And if they want to add stuff to their website, they type it in on their phone and they hit publish and it goes to that page on their site. So if they want to stay up to date with their site and add new stuff, like let's say a brewery or somewhere where there are, are events every week and they want to post information about the events, I'll build the site for them and give them app access where they can just type in a journal entry, hit publish, and it will be added to their homepage. So I don't want to babysit the process. I want to design and hand it off and be done with. It's kind of like what we call a one-off. You create it once, you give it to them, and you let them do it. That's what web tools are for. And many, many students have used some version of this before. And I was joking in a previous class, whitehouse.org is a WordPress site. I mean, lots of very, very large companies use web-based web design tools. A, it's open source. B, it allows you to use a template environment without having to understand a template environment. C, it allows you to write script, embed code, and not have to know anything about what you're doing in essence, because it does it for you. There's lots of benefits to doing something in a web-based environment. And next week we will have a final project and you will be building me a website based on a client you pick, traditionally from a list I give you, and you'll be building a few pages for me. And 50-50, 50% of the students choose to use the movie zip file and just re-edit it to make it a new thing. And 50% of the students use a Wix environment like we're going to do tonight or WordPress. So, and it's funny over the years, as the web tools have gotten even better, I still have 50-50. Still 50% 50 of the students will use the HTML files that I provided to you week one because they feel comfortable because they already know where all the information is and all they have to do is replace the pictures and the text versus a web tool where there's a little bit more exploration. So we're not going to touch Dreamweaver this week. And if you are done with your Dreamweaver assignments, you may not have to touch Dreamweaver again. So there's a little bit of a celebration there, I guess, if you weren't as comfortable in the coding environment as you would hope or like or want or care about. So I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna play around in a web tool tonight and that might be the tool you use next week too. So hopefully one of these connects the dots and there's a lot of comparison between the web tools and the writing of code that we did the first few weeks of class. So I'm gonna connect a lot of dots tonight just so you can see what the files were like that we edited and what they mean in the web world. So there's a very big translation. So it's really important to know how to put the car together if you're gonna drive it. So when it breaks, you kind of know how to fix it. And that's my mentality with technology in general. Even if there is a more automated, better tool out there, you should learn the manual process first so that if you have to lean on the automated process, you know how to fix it if something goes wrong. So that's a really big thing. So let's get in and play around a little bit. 
Um, we're going to play around in Wix tonight. Uh, if we have a little bit of time, I'm going to open up WordPress and play around with that a little bit with you. But I think it's really important that we use a tool that I think everyone will be able to connect the dots with based on our assignments the first three weeks. I think this tool will be one that everyone will feel like I can successfully build a multiple page website using this process because I learned how to do it by hand the first two and a half to three weeks of the class. So hopefully this becomes a tool that's really easy for you. And remember, this is web-based. So when I open up a new window here and we go in to start building a website in a cloud or a web-based environment, we do not need Dreamweaver. So don't be looking at Dreamweaver or anything for the tools because they are all embedded in Wix.com. We're going to talk about the FTP manager. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about uh, the the site details. We're going to talk about all the metadata. We're going to talk about Google Analytics. We're going to talk about favicons. We're going to talk about all the stuff we talked about the first few weeks of web development time. But we're just going to do it in a more web-based environment. It doesn't mean that we're not gonna edit all of the same things that we did in our movies.zip file. It's just, we're doing it more in a front-end friendly environment. There's no split view per se here. We're working in a design live view with everything we're doing here. So you gotta go over to wix.com and on wix.com it's gonna say something like get started with a big image in the middle of it, you click it. Uh, I tell all the students, because we're just doing this for educational purposes, set up your username and password as your hodges.email address, and then whatever password you want, just so that you can remember it if you ever wanna log in later and explore it. So let's get into wix.com and just set up a username and password, and you'll do sign in, it'll type in email, and then it'll ask for the password twice, and once you do that, click and get in. And then we're going to go into the create new. We're going to make a new site because we're going to actually build a site together tonight. So let me get into, let me expand my window a little bit. And I'm just going to sign out for a minute just so that you can see. So when you log into Wix, you're going to get basically this menu right here, right? So you got this big image here and some of you might've watched the pre-lecture and you probably already saw that we played around in this environment a little bit, but uh, we're gonna create in this environment. So you can go to sign in and it'll let you sign up, right? Sign up where you set up your own thing. Um, I'm already, I already have an account, so I'm just gonna sign in. And then we're gonna see the same thing when we get into this environment. Because we're gonna create new and we're gonna type in the same stuff so that we all have the same thing. So let's set up a username and password and get in there. And then we're gonna create a new. So when you log in, you're gonna have, you know, you'll probably log into my sites or some version of my sites. And we wanna create a new site. And when you create a new site, it's actually going to, ask you like, what kind of site are you looking to create, right? Because there's hundreds of templates inside of these environments. Remember, we use DWT templates, right? We use DWT templates. So Dreamweaver already had templates. And if we wanted to do a responsive website design, chapter seven, eight, nine, ten 10 in your book, then we would use the bootstrap templates. Well, Wix, WordPress, Squarespace, I mean, there are so many of them. It feels like every day a website tool is popping up. And I've started to try to explore what my iPad has too, because the Apple store has website design tools as well. Many of them are just app versions of the websites of all the tools that are out there. So we're gonna do a coffee shop. So when we do a search for what we're looking for, we're gonna do a coffee shop. So let's see what they have. for templates for coffee shop, just to see what the themes are like, right? And so it's gonna say like, what do you want from the coffee shop? So we're gonna do a brochure style website. So we're gonna turn off food orders because we're gonna do a little shop in Bonita Springs that I go to every once in a while that I really love. Uh, we're gonna keep the chat icon on there because they have a really good chat plugin in Wix that you can interact with. We don't need an online store. Um, 
a menu's fine. Yeah, menu's fine. They don't really have that much. It's drinks and stuff, but we'll keep the restaurant menus checked because what it's going to look for, it's going to look for level one navigation that includes some of these things. So let's do a coffee shop. Let's keep a couple of these boxes checked. We're not really selling anything online, although they'd be smart to sell t-shirts or something like that because it's so popular, but we'll just stick with a couple of the boxes and we'll check next. Now, you can follow along and do the same thing I'm doing, or if you're inspired to nose around, you have an idea for something else you want to play around with, you can do that as well. Um, I'm just going to do a coffee shop because it's a really kind of, they have a terrible website first. It's a local business with only one location. They could use a lot of help. And if you did this as a final project, you might even want to pitch it to them like, hey, I built this cool website. You should take a look at it. And if you like it, uh, hook me up with some free coffee, right? So, because they have a terrible one. Now, when you log into any of these type of environments, you have the option of having them create it for you. Left-hand side of the page, WordPress, they all do the same thing. Hey, we have designers. Do you want it to build this for, for you? Or do you want to build it on your own using our HTML editor? And luckily for us, we've been playing with an HTML editor called Dreamweaver. So we're going to edit the template and we're going to create this thing ourselves. I'm going to point to all the same terminology, all the same process, all the same everything that we did deconstructing and reconstructing in Dreamweaver. We're just going to do it in the Wix platform. And I'm just using this one because I've used three or four clients in the last six months, helped them build their sites. If it isn't WordPress, it's Wix. I do know some students in the class have had experience with Squarespace and some of the other ones. Wix is a really big corporate beast right now, and they have a lot of plugins available, which means if you pay a monthly fee to have hosting space with Wix, they give you free plugins, and some of their free plugins are pretty cool. So, and most, most template sites do that too. WordPress does it too. WordPress is truly open source, which means there's all kinds of third-party plugins, some good, some bad. Wix really controls their plugins, so most of them are really good. I had a student in one of my web design classes. He works for the Benita Bay Group in their sports complex, and they needed to build a, a kind of a sub page for a, a tennis tournament, and we're talking like USTA, like big time tennis tournament, and they actually built their page with Wix, and they paid Wix to use their ticket purchasing system and the only thing they had to do to scan and check people into the tennis facility was use an iPhone or an iPad because Wix not only collected the money, picked the seat for them, but also produced a QR code that they could show at the gate for the people to scan in. It made the business way easier for them. So they were happy to pay for that. So we're going to go in and do edit a template. And so now you're going to see, man, there are some really cool coffee themed templates. Now, one thing I do want to tell you about theme based web design. If you have a client that's a coffee shop, it doesn't mean that you might not want to search for a theme from a yoga studio. Like students fall in love with the fact that these companies tell you what a theme should look like. Well, that's not necessarily true. You can find some really cool hardware store templates that have beautiful images and beautiful colors and really nice layouts that would be just as good to use for a coffee shop. So just because it's coffee doesn't mean you have to search for coffee. I've converted websites for clients. The Pilates studio I worked with, they wanted to build a website and I used a flower shop as the template for them and I rebranded it to be theirs because they liked the white space, they liked where the image images were, the size of them, they liked the social media integration, and they liked the overall typography. So don't think that because it's a certain business that you have to use a certain theme. That is not true. So just be aware of that. Okay, so we're in coffee world. I'm gonna show you a lot of different uh, plugins and widgets and places to find imagery and all kinds of things that kind of hopefully, if you weren't so inspired by HTML editing, maybe you'll be inspired by just design. This is UI UX, it's the interface and it's the experience. That's what we're creating. A lot of the stuff is already there for you. 
The typography is already embedded with server specific fonts. Like everything is already set up for you. In the course of the hour and a half to hour and 45 minute lecture, or it might take two hours, we're gonna build an entire website. I mean, we legitimately are going to build an entire website in this lecture. So just know the struggle is real when it's in manual code mode, but it's not as big a struggle here. We're gonna really enforce visual elements and why web design is what it is from a wireframe standpoint using a web-based tool like Wix. All right, so let's see what we got here. So I just gotta pick one. So I'm just trying to see what I like what I think would be cool. Uh, the place that I like to go to is kind of a Nietzsche, you know, they make really fancy drinks for coffee. So I think I'm gonna choose like this one up here in the upper right-hand corner uh, because I think it's a good place to start. Now, we're gonna go ahead and pick edit and it's gonna launch their live view wireframe. And that's exactly what this is. This little widget that's running, this little animation is loading their live view of web design. The only difference is their live view does not have a code view. So what you see here is everything, how it would look, right? So this thing has loaded a live view, fully editable template and page environment. So. When we look down the left-hand navigation here, you're gonna see some things that hopefully you'll recognize as we navigate through like site design, which means theme, menus and pages, which means primary navigation, media, which means our image folder. Uh, a lot of these things add, which is in essence, uh, the area you go to insert items, kind of like you would in the HTML. It has a desktop view. It has a responsive site, which means it has a phone or mobile view, which is what this is. And you can switch it back and forth. Instead of pinching your screen in Dreamweaver to change the proportions, you just change the proportions right here. And what's smart about Wix is that it sniffs your browser and finds out if it's a full operating system or an iOS or Android operating system, and it reproportions the responsiveness of the site based on the device. Unlike Dreamweaver that had anchor points that broke at different pixel ratios to change the proportion of the site. So Wix just does it as an automated process. So it's a really smart process. Now, we've got to look at several things just to get comfortable with this template environment. The very first thing we have to look at is our site settings. So when we go to up here to the dashboard, you're gonna notice all of these little settings right here, uh, all of the things that are associated or tied to your website. So you're gonna see things like the favicon, which we already saw in Dreamweaver, right? Favicon's that little icon that appears right up here in the tab, which you can see Wix right up here in the browser tab has their own favicon. Wix, you don't, have to, you don't have to embed it in the metadata. It is right here, right here. So this thing is attached to its URL already. So I'm just doing a quick save so that it knows my live site. So I just went up and did a quick site save, which you can also do right here. And you're gonna notice that the site save gives you a public URL. So you see this HTTPS uh, colon backslash a macro a5 wixsite.com slash my site. That is my public domain that people can actually type in and have access to, right? Full access to. So this site is live and is public. It just needs to be edited and it doesn't have a custom URL. But by tinkering around on Wix, they already give you an IP address in essence. They just brand it for their own because you haven't paid to brand it for you. And the beauty about that is you get to play around with things and build sites and you aren't committed to, we call them beta sites, you're not committed to this thing being live for the world to see for your client until you're actually ready to. So it's really nice. The only negative with beta sites, which means you haven't paid any of these programs, Squarespace, WordPress, any of these Wix for hosting space, there are certain plugins, more enhanced 
material that you don't have access in the free view, but that's okay because we're only building a basic website. We don't need event plugins. We don't need custom tickets centers. We don't need shopping carts. We don't need those fancy elements because we are building a basic brochure style website. So before we really go any further, I'm going to go back to the dashboard. So you see up here in the Wix logo, it, can, it says go back to the dashboard. I'm going to go back to the dashboard for a minute. And you're going to notice that we're actually in the dashboard of the coffee shop. So it looks a little bit different because we have this menu down the left hand side. You'll see the domain name is right here. You'll see that we haven't activated any of the extra upgrade elements that you get in a Wix environment. This is no different than Squarespace or WordPress or any of the others. So if there's a certain industry you work in and there's a certain web-based tool that that industry uses like host hotel, restaurant, that sort of thing, they're all gonna be the same. The website's gonna have a template and it's gonna have a dashboard. And think of the dashboard as kind of the place where the global settings are for the website that you're building. Think of it as the metadata. So you're gonna notice Right up here in our dashboard, we have our domain name. We have what plan we're in, and you'll see there's all kinds of different stuff that they try to get you to pay for. But what I wanna point you to is right over here, right over here, because there's some free metadata that's already embedded in your site when you use a tool like Wix or, or WordPress or any of them. Uh, one is search engine optimization, which is SEO which you can see right here. This website has a Google business profile. We can actually go in and set up our SEO tools. We can enhance our Google search. We can embed our business profile so Google Analytics can track it. This is way easier than building a site in Dreamweaver, opening up a Google account. And when you open up a Google account, you can actually get a Google Analytics ID number and if you take that ID number and you embed it in the metadata, the head data, remember when we were building our basic HTML page, your data can be tracked by that pin number or that ID number in the back end of your website that you built from scratch. And you log into Google, go into that ID number, and you can see all the metadata. The beauty is it's already built in here into our website, making it much easier to use. Good and bad of that. You could pay for Facebook and Instagram ads, the whole nine yards. Some of this is accessed via the paid subscription to the hosting price. It's between $9.99 and $14.99 a month. It's not a huge thing, but that's how Wix generates its revenue. Some of these tools are only accessible via the business profile plan. And you'll see we're on the free plan right now. But I want to show you where these things are, because if you set up your Google profile, you can track your analytics right here. You don't even have to go into Google. It'll give you traffic, sales, behavior, reports, insights, benchmarks, the site speed, any alerts. If someone only goes on one page and doesn't go anywhere else on your site, it'll give you alert data like half of your people have only logged into your site but never actually searched on it which is interesting data because we run surveys at the university and we can see that like 30% of the people only actually filled the survey out, even though 80% opened it up, right? Oh my gosh, why did they open it up but not fill it out? Is it too hard? Does it take too long? Are they intimidated? Don't they care, right? Metadata is really important. Well, Wix has it all built in through the dashboard. So we're not even in the website yet. We're just in the dashboard. So if we wanted to create a hosting plan, if we wanted to pay for a custom domain, it's all linked right here. Lots of web designers want to pay for their domain name in the same place they pay for their hosting. So when they ha have a bill each year, they pay for the domain name and the hosting in the same place. I can't tell you the number of clients I've had that bought a domain name at GoDaddy, but GoDaddy is terrible for building websites and they want me to connect their domain name from GoDaddy to their website on WordPress. It's not hard, but it is a pain in the butt because the client gets a bill every year from GoDaddy for the URL and a bill every year from WordPress for their hosting of their website. Not a huge deal, but it's two bills. It's two things to track. 
WordPress, Wix, they all do the same thing. They actually give you the domain name when you pay for hosting space. Remember, there's only one domain name. So it doesn't matter which hosting environment you're using, no matter where you pay to put your website, they all have access to the same database of domain names. So you can buy it from anywhere. So don't fall for the trick. Well, the domain name you want is only available at GoDaddy. That's not true. You can go to Bluehost, Network Solutions, uh, Amazon uh, Network. You can go to any of them, their cloud service. They all have access to the same domain names. There's only one for each. So it's a matter of finding the tool that fits your business or industry. But the one thing I want to point to is the site settings, which is right here. So I'm going to click on that. These site settings are specific to your website. And these are very important to set up no matter what web tool you use. So if you work for, I don't know, you work for a construction company that sells wood and nails and screws and all of those things, you need to make sure that you set up all of your business profile information in your website settings, because that's what people go to in order to search for your business. So when you're using a tool like Wix.com and you build a website, you need to make sure that you set the settings of the website up. So if you are using a web-based tool, you need to make sure you set them up. If you're using Dreamweaver, it's connected in the metadata. It's not as big a deal because you're manually setting it up. But you may notice when you go to Wix.com and you pick a template to build in a cloud-based environment, you pick that template, you gotta start right here, which is website settings. These are the website settings. This is the metadata. So instead of doing a head tag and putting all this information in it, you put it right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my site name to Downtown Coffee. Downtown Coffee. Because Downtown Coffee is the name of the business in Downtown Bonita Springs that I like to get a coffee to on the weekend. That is a one person, one shop, not a chain. They make some really wicked coffees, a little bit pricey, but you pay a little bit coffee pricey when you get a wicked coffee. Um, but their site is absolutely terrible. So if no student ever approaches them in the next year, I'm going to approach them and see if I can't get a year of free coffee in order to redo their website because it's terrible. And the owner is pretty whole, cool and hip. So if I built it for him in this environment, I think he would be able to edit it and change it. So the very first thing you use in a web tool environment is you have to set the site details or the site settings. So you're going to notice everything from the site name to the URL address, right? So right now, this is not custom. But remember, WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, doesn't matter what you use. You can get a custom URL. It's just part of the hosting that you pay in order to have your site live in an IP address for people to find. So you're gonna notice right here, upgrade. I could change the extension name here, but it will always say wixsite.com. If you don't want it to say wixsite.com and you want it to be downtowncoffee.com, then you have to pay for hosting space, which includes a domain name. You wanna make sure you do that in the same location because if you go to GoDaddy or Amazon Cloud Services or any of those places and you get a domain name, they're going to charge you anywhere from five to ten dollars a year for a domain name. And then if you host it somewhere else, they're going to charge you $9.99 to $14.99 a month to host your website. But if you get your domain name the pl same place you host it, typically they throw the domain name in for free. Is it a big deal? No, but you can save yourself six, seven, eight, nine bucks a year. Eh, it's not a huge deal. But in the scheme of things, to have it all in one location, I think it's a big deal. So if you're thinking about this as a tool that you might want to try later on for a friend or a family or a business idea you might have, make sure you get your domain name and your hosting space at the same location. All right, so let's get into the metadata. And we're going to ed edit the settings a little bit. And then we're going to go out and build our site. And we're going to build it all tonight, all five pages. Take us about an hour and a half. All right, so I'm gonna change this to downtown coffee. And so that'll be my unique name. So if I was using this tool to build my final project, wink, wink, next week, wink, wink, this is what you need to give me. This is the public URL 
that I'll be able to see your site, which means you can use your phone, your tablet, your computer, you can go to the library, you can go to Starbucks, you can build this site anywhere. You do not need Dreamweaver. You do not need your own images folder. You do not need your own CSS files. You can build it all right here. Just know that the final project has a web address submission option. And that is what you have to give me. You have to give me that public URL, which you will see on the homepage. When we go back to the homepage of the dashboard, this is it right here. Don't give me just this name. I need the entire URL extension. And more than likely, it's going to be HTTPS, colon, backslash, backslash, your last name, some number, dot, wix site, dot com, slash. And don't give me just this, dot com, slash. I need the actual my site or whatever the name is there. So just know that. And you'll notice that the little favicon, and we talked about it in Dreamweaver, the little icon up here, 64 pixels by 64 pixels, and it shrinks down to about 32 by 32. This little thing can be replaced by uploading an image instead of having to put it in the images folder and tag it in the metadata. Favicon equals quotation marks. So it's all very dashboard friendly. And you'll notice the beauty about web-based web design tools is it does social media integration. So if you put a link on your website to Facebook or Instagram or any of those, Twitter, you can actually upload an image of your business here in the settings. And anytime you post from your website, it automatically inputs the image inside your social media feed. It's really smart. I mean, it's very, very smart. This is way easier than coding it by hand in Dreamweaver. Some people love the challenge. I love the challenge, to be honest with you. I try to not use these tools as much as possible. But in today's day and age, it's just easier. Now, if you choose a website tool that has social media integrated in it, which I believe the template I picked, you enter your social media information right here. So the icon for Facebook in the template automatically points here when you put it in the site settings. The email you attach to your site settings automatically is the email that attaches to the contact form on the contact page. Now, that contact form is a PHP command, which means if you built a contact form inside a Dreamweaver, you would also have to have a PHP file. And the PHP file basically codes the input of clicking submit on your contact form, and it attaches the email address. It's not as easy as it sounds. It's a bit of a process to put a contact form in a website using an HTML editor. Here, you attach an email to your business account and it automatically posts all contact forms into that email address. I mean, it's really genius. I mean, it really is very smart. So this thing already has properties attached to the settings of your site, right? It already has all of these attributes and settings already attached to your site. I mean, it's really, really smart. So from an email contact form, from a social media integration, from a hosting and custom web domain to all of the Google Analytics, they all exist on the dashboard right here. So if you're building your own site, remember you need to go into the site settings and at minimum, update the business name to match the name of the theme that you're building. We're doing downtown coffee and wine, which is a little, a little family owned or a guy owns it, a little shop in Benita Springs on Old 41. So uh, that's why I named my site that. If you're building your site and you're building it for a client, name it whatever. You'll see it's case sensitive. So you can go in and write whatever the name of the business is. It just attaches to what appears in your title tag when you're building your site. So that's all I'm gonna pitch about the dashboard when you're in Dreamweaver. You need to make sure you click on this link and you update the site so that it has your custom URL and your custom site title tag, which is all metadata. And that's all the stuff that we did in Dreamweaver. It's just way easier here. Okay. That's all in the dashboard of the website, right? So I'm gonna close a couple of these windows so that we're in the same spot. So, right, I just clicked on the Wix logo and it brought me back to my main dashboard. And you're gonna notice 
that now my site says downtown coffee. So all I did was Wix.com, set up a username and password, do create new site, pick a template as my option. I want to build a template, type in the search for the kind of business I want to build and click select that or edit that website. And that's how I got to here. Once you have that selected, that's where you have access to your settings, your dashboard, that kind of thing. So now it's time to go into the website. So once you pick a theme, we're now going to go in and see what the header looks like, the footer looks like, primary navigation. I'm going to use every term that I use the first two plus weeks of this class, breaking down what web design is, because now I'm going to do it in a web tool environment. No Dreamweaver, no uh, public HTML folder, no subfolders, no HTML, no CSS per se, no JavaScript, all that stuff we tinkered around with in Dreamweaver is all embedded in a front end dashboard. So we're gonna select and edit. And now let's get into what this thing looks like, right? So we're gonna get in and see what this thing looks like. So we cl clicked on the site again and it put us into our dashboard here. And now we're just gonna get in and edit our site. All right, so let's get in here and let's play around here with uh, some of our tools. So let's get in here and let's check the menu. And you're gonna notice a couple of things that are attached to our site already here, attached to our coffee site, which are just some of the little plugins and archives and different things like that associated with this site, all attached to like kind of metadata type environments. And we can publish our site. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the publish just so that you can see that the HTML editor is going to open and we're going to actually make this thing live for the world to see. Remember, if you don't click publish, and you're going to see it up here in the right hand corner, which is right here. Once we open up our HTML editor window, our live view window, we have save, preview, and publish. Publish is important because that makes it so that the world can see what we're doing. That little URL that we made custom in our settings, right? Settings right up here. We need to make sure we publish it so that thing becomes what the world can see. And you'll notice that we can always preview it. So take a look at this thing. This is our site. We can do live view. That's what this is in essence, live view, right? Here it is. Really good looking website, actually. I don't know that I would have loved having my primary navigation being static like this, uh, but it's what I picked on the site, so it's okay. And so I'm gonna go back to my editor and this is where we just start to build. So we're just gonna start to build pieces so you can see how this thing works. So here is my site, right? This is what it looks like in edit view. And you're gonna notice that all of the objects in this thing, you can fully edit. So we're gonna start with some very basic things because you're gonna notice that our navigation actually is down here at the bottom. This little stripe here on this particular template is our top piece of bread. So you're gonna notice there's a horizontal menu, there's a logo, and there's a tagline. Now in preview view, it's static right down here on the bottom, right? So as I scroll down and up, that thing stays in its same place. Remember, this is basically our top piece of bread. So it would be at the top of our website if the website didn't have this particular template style. But just remember, this is our top piece of bread. On this site, it just happens to be at the bottom. So there's a few things we have to do. We have to edit the logo or the branding of our top piece of bread. So if I click on this little text, look how easy it is to edit our template. We don't have to worry about opening our template in Dreamweaver, remembering that the wireframe is in the template and all the pages content are in the HTML files. Everything is visible on every page and we just click to edit it. 
So I'm gonna edit text. And you're gonna notice it's already set to H1. We learned how to code Dreamweaver H1. Here it is right here. Here's the font already associated with it. Here's a link, which actually is pointing our logo to the home page already associated with it. So if I click on it, you're gonna notice that the link says it's linked to a page called home. Really easy to add to your website. So look at how easy the CSS is for our template without having to go into our DWT file. It's right here. So if I wanna double click on it and change it to downtown coffee, I can do it. If I wanna extend this and make it bigger, I can do it. If I wanna change the color of it, it's all right here. I mean, it's super, super easy. I don't like brown. I wanna make it a different shade of brown. Maybe I don't wanna make it this green color. The template already has the theme already set up. Look at the theme colors. All of the colors for the website are already themed out for you. So you don't have to worry about picking a bad color for something. It's all right here for you. I, I don't like underline, so I'm gonna remove the underline. I think it should be bold. I'm gonna make it bold. I think it should be bold and italic. I'm gonna make it bold and italic. Did we have to B tag the text? No. Did we have to I tag the text? No. Do I wanna center align it? I'm just gonna pick center align. No, nah, no, maybe I'll make it left align. Everything from the CSS is built into the palettes that open up when you select an object on the screen. It's really scary how easy it is. Everything is fully editable. You just click on it and it says edit. I mean, and this is all the CSS we had to write in Dreamweaver. Font size, header tag, bold, italic, colors, which are hex numbers, hrefs, which are links, alignments, left, center, right, justified, effects like drop shadows, everything that's scripted using code. Oh, I think a drop shadow would be cool. That's it. There's no go to the CSS, type in shadow. None of that stuff. It's all built in right here. It's really scary. Even the kerning, the letting, everything that has to do with this is built in to this dashboard. You don't have to know CSS at all. Do you need to kind of know you know, what looks good, what the wireframe structure is, why it is what it is, why you would want it H1 instead of H2 or H3. But look at this, it has all the headers built in. So if you wanted to change the header size, it's already here. The theme already has the colors, already has the fonts that look best with this theme. It's already right there for you. It's all the terminology we used in Dreamweaver. This is a div tag. You see this little box right here? This is called a div tag. You don't have to do a div open and div close. The container's already there for you. So it makes life really easy. So we're doing downtown coffee. So we're gonna change the header, piece of the top piece of bread, the header to match the business that we're doing. I gotta change the tagline too, but I have to go in and I have to open up their website. So downtown coffee and wine. Bonita Springs. So this is theirs. So just to give you an idea of what their website is, and I have to tell you, this place is booming. Every time I go, there's 30 people eating outside. There's a line out the door. I think the business itself is like uh, 200 square feet. I mean, it is the smallest business you ever see in your life. I, I don't know what it was before. I, I think I kind of remember what it was before. It was a really, really, really small packaging store. Like by packaging, I mean beverages. Like you could go in and buy beer and wine and it was a really itty bitty store. This is their website. Take a look at this thing. I mean, it is horrible. I can't read half the text. The thing scrolls, which is the theme I picked, which probably wasn't the smartest thing. They do have social media, but this is about their business. This is their hours. These are random photos they chose, which don't even show the business. These are stock images. That isn't, that's the front door. This is their website. I mean, it's terrible, absolutely terrible. And the business is booming. And I think he wants to chain it eventually. So he may have to do something about this. Uh, but what is there? So it's downtown coffee and wine company. So I need to change this. 
So the top thing is downtown. Now, I'm gonna shrink this div tag a little bit because it's important to do that because remember this is responsive. So I don't want this box to be way over here because when I shrink the site to phone properties, I wanna make sure the text box is a little closer to the actual size of the thing. Okay, so I need downtown. Where's my site? I gotta find that thing again. Uh, downtown Coffee and Wine Company. What a funny name, Toffee, Coffee and Wine Company. Uh, so let's see, Coffee and, I'm gonna use Ampersand Wine Company because I think it's cooler. This is called a tagline, so I'm just doing that underneath. Now, you'll notice the color is still brown, so I could highlight it and I could change the color to match that other green, which is right here. If I wanted to, I could add a drop shadow to it. I think I'm gonna make it italic and bold. Bold and italic. I changed the color. I'm gonna do a tiny little drop shadow to it. Now, the beauty about these tools, so you see when I mouse over it, it says footer. This has the same properties as our DWT template in our folder. So we already know about headers and footers and all that good stuff, right? Now, everything from simple hairlines, which this is code, HTML code to do this little line break line, it's all pre-built in there. I'm gonna go in and edit the text. So I did the logo already. I'm just gonna edit everything for you and show you how it applies to all pages. And then we're gonna go in and edit individual pages. So let's edit this text. So I'm gonna do uh, uh, copyright 2022. Oh, Wix is freezing this because I didn't pay. Uh, yeah, they're going to make me keep their little logo tagged to the bottom. Those criminals, uh, it's grayed out. They won't let me edit it because I don't have a hosting con contract with them, which is smart. That's what WordPress does too. WordPress will not let you remove the name WordPress from the bottom of your page if you do not pay them to do that. Uh, I live in Astero on Stony Brook Golf Club. Uh, it's a public course. Their website is built by WordPress. It says WordPress all over their site. I guess they didn't want to pay to have WordPress removed. And I guess they don't care that it's WordPress that has the branding because it's all over the place. So Wix does do that. So, okay, so we edited the header. They froze the footer, which is fine, but we're gonna start branding this thing. Now you'll notice that this site currently has three pages. It has the home page, which is what the logo is linked to. And it has shops, menus, and buy coffee. You're gonna notice up here, it has the names of our buttons. So you see home, our shops, menus, buy coffee. You're also gonna notice if you paid for this membership, it has everything from a store credit, which is called My Wallet, to private security-based account settings and custom URL addresses, which means you could buy like three or four URLs and I'll point them to this page. Uh, so we're going to manage the pages. So we're going to go right down here and manage the pages. And you're going to notice these pages are set. Now you're going to notice this little eyeball next to home. The little eyeball next to home means it doesn't appear in our primary navigation, but it is a page you can link to. And that's why the home icon, the name of the business is linked to the home page. This is best practice. It's fine if you wanted to turn on this page. So you see what happens if I do show, it appears in my primary navigation. You'll actually notice that home is added to the primary navigation. This is kind of old school. You don't really put a home link on your primary navigation because typically the home page, the icon, your logo is the link to your home page. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that. I could rename these pages if I wanted to. So I got to go back in and I've got to change it to locations, about us, and menu. So I'm gonna change our shops to locations. Or I think it's location, right? Yep, location. So let's go in here and I'm gonna change our shops. I'm gonna rename it to location. And I'm gonna click done and watch what happens. Right over here, my primary navigation changes to location just by changing the name of my site menu. I didn't have to change the HTML name. 
I didn't have to go into the template and rename the primary navigation location, right? We had to do that in two different locations. If we wanted to change the name of a button on our website, we had to go into the DWT, change the button name, and then go into the HTML files and change the HTML files to the name of the button. Well, we don't have to do that because when you change it in the site menu, it changes it everywhere. It's a much easier process, but you just have to know what you're doing and what's affecting it. So by doing that, we're just causing an effect. We're changing the HTML name for the file, and we're also changing the button name and the href link in the button pointing to that HTML file. Same process, it's just in one location instead of two locations. All right, so we're gonna change location, then we need about us and our menu. So I wanna change menus to our menu and see how it's case sensitive, just like it was when we did it on ours. Now look at that, now we have location, now we have our menu, and then last but not least, I'm gonna change about us. So I'm gonna change buy coffee to about us. So I'm gonna rename it and I'm gonna do about us. So changing it in one location, which was the site menu drop down, changes it in all of our navigation right here. So every single page of our website, the index, the location.html, the our menu.html, and the about us.html, all changed by just changing the name of the pages in our site menu. Very, very easy. Now, you may notice when I click, like let's say on the location button and I click on the WW, the dot, 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 it has settings attached to each page and SEO attached to each page and social media attached to each page. This is all metadata specific to this page. When I was in the site settings, we were looking at the metadata that was specific to all pages. So two different locations, just like Dreamweaver. If we did settings in the DWT file, it affected all of the pages. If we did settings or metadata on the individual pages, it only affected the individual pages. We're using the same terminology. We're just looking in different locations, same terminology we were doing. So for location, I'm just gonna check the information on this page and take a look at this. It has all of the advanced settings that you would get in metadata in the individual pages, the head tag information, all in this little menu. So you can adjust the layout. So you know how we had two different templates in our movies.zip file. One was the home page template, and one was the individual movies template. Well, look at this. In the settings for location.html, which is the site menu, there's two different templates, one with navigation and one without navigation. So this also has two DWT files. The only difference is they're browser-based. They aren't individual DWT files. So that's pretty cool. Now, you can even password protect or member protect individual pages. If I was to do this inside of Dreamweaver, I would have to associate a script file that called my one particular page password or secure, and it would require a username and password. It's a complicated process. That's a web two plus class, a member only, a web two plus class, because you have to set up a custom login to protect the information. Look how easy it is here. I just click on this and I can make this site, this page only accessible by username and password. Really easy. It's embedded in the code of the Wix platform, SEO basics. All of the metadata, the head data for the location.html page is right here. I mean, look at all of the metadata. So if I wanted to change this to location, 
I just change it right there. So now you're going to see there's my URL, downtown coffee slash location. This URL slug is now updated on all of my pages. Look at the title tag, right? Title equals, well, the title tag for this page is location, vertical slash, downtown coffee. I mean, this is really smart stuff. It's already built in. All of that behind the scenes code, all of that struggling with the chapters, all of that stuff that made you pull your hair out is embedded in the menu of the page. Social share. If I uploaded an image here, it would only be for the location page and it would attach my business image for social media upload. I mean, it's so smart. Everything is embedded. You can even do a custom description in the location page with a social media icon and you can post to it. I mean, it's really, really smart. Advanced SEO is for when you pay for the pages. So you see robots meta tag, which means when they send out the meta spiders to search the page, this sniffs out the robots and makes it a manual process instead of an automated process. Every single aspect of the page is built in a simple menu environment. I mean, it's super, super simple process. Now, that's all we need for pages. So I just went to the site pages site right here and did manage sites. So if you were building a website for your buddy that owned a landscape business and you picked a template for him, you typed in landscape template and it's gonna give you some beautiful ones, guys mowing the lawn. Just be careful that he's not mowing the lawn with mountains in the back because Southwest Florida, there isn't really mountains in the back. And I've seen people do that where they have sites of things and it's a landscape that it has nothing to do with Southwest Florida. There's like a mesa, and there's like these beautiful stone structures and it looks like Arizona, but it's a business that does landscaping in Southwest Florida. Uh, so you wanna make sure that it's consistent with the location, but you just go into the pages and you update the page list to be the page list that your buddy wants. He wants a home page. He wants an about why he started the business. He wants a services page and he wants a contact us page. We would just go into the site pages and rename them to those things. I mean, very, very simple tools. We've effectively changed the entire DWT file just by going into the footer and header site of the template. And it has changed it on all four pages. So we now have a template that we can go into each individual page now and edit the text to make it match your client's business or what you like or what you're trying to create in a theme, in a responsive structure, all together, desktop and mobile. I click on the mobile icon and it changes to a responsive website. So look at the drop down menu. It changed downtown, put it there. Coffee and wine company, put it there. Put drop shadows on both. It restructured everything has my footer down here. It does everything for you as long as you stay in the container shapes that the theme or the template has. So now that we've done that, let's go in and edit the home page. So I'm just gonna go to my pages drop down, and I'm gonna pick home. We know home is index.html and look at how beautiful the home page is. It already has dripping coffee. It already has a brown theme. It already has a gallery. It already has everything that we need. But we just need to go in and edit all of the pieces. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start editing the text and the images in the top of this page so they're a little bit more custom. So let me look at the terrible site that is Downtown Coffee Company. Look at what they did for the title town, Downtown CNW. Uh, that's not a good Google search. Because if you Google search downtown C and W could be catfish and waterfalls. I mean, it like it's not even a title tag that helps them with their searchability. All right, so let's just see what's on the home page. Follow us on social media for dates. Let's see if there's oh, here we go. Welcome to Downtown Coffee and Wine Company. So this is in essence their home top image. The problem is you have to scroll halfway down the page 
to get to their home top image, which is right here. So I need to change this text to be welcome to downtown coffee and wine. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna click on it, double click, and I'm gonna do welcome. So let's just get in here. Let's edit this text. Let's get in here and hmm, my keyboard's acting a little weird. Uh, come on. Drag, drag, drag. Let's save it. Oh, let's save it. Done. Let's see what we have here. We got heading number four. This is our font. This is our color. Editor's acting a little bit weird here. Come on. Make sure my keyboard is working. Hmm, my keyboard's acting weird. Let's see if I can close out of here and open up my thing again. It's acting a little funky here. My keyboard isn't working. Do, 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 do. Let's go back to my dashboard. You can edit your text while I'm just navigating through my little thing here. Let me just make sure my live site is working, make sure I don't have too many things going hokey here. Let's close a couple of my tabs, make sure my editor isn't competing because I got too many tabs open. Mm I'm going to turn off my developer mode so you don't see all the funky stuff, all the extra embedded code there. My keyboard's acting really weird though, my keyboard and mouse, so I got to figure out what's going on there. Hmm. I must have something going on here. I'm gonna switch out this image just to see what's going on. My thing has a huge delay in it, so it's taking forever. So I'm just gonna click through a few things and see if I can get this delay to kind of stop being so hokey. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add some media. I'm gonna swap out my image. And you'll notice when I swap out my image, I can go to media from Wix and I'm gonna type in coffee and see if there's a different coffee image I might like to add to that background. So I'm gonna go in here and just for the sake of the process, let's find some kind of niche -y thing here that matches my site. I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit too and see if there's not something going on with my browser here that's con conflicting with something that I'm working on. Wix sometimes gets a little weird. And you'll notice that this particular site has a gallery. So it's got a few different pictures attached to it. So I'm gonna go into preview mode and see if, there's my gallery. So I'm gonna see if my new image is in there. There it is right there. So let's go back to editor. I wanna see what's going on with my text tool. Why it's acting a little bit weird. Oh, there you go. Uh, it's got a huge delay in it. So something's going on there a little bit. So keep in mind, even with web tools, there's a little bit of, you know, things that can happen. So let's go welcome to, first I thought it was my keyboard, but it's just a really big delay 
And I wonder if we're having some internet delays or something on campus right now. Uh, downtown. You did too? So downtown. We have Comcast and every once in a while, and I don't know why we get a little hiccup and it's hard when you're doing web design because you need the internet. So we're gonna do welcome downtown coffee. You'll notice that I just clicked on the text and edit text and it already has my H4 set up my font. Do you think I have Sacramento font on my computer? Nope. It's a web-based font that's embedded on the Wix server. So I can pick any font I want. And that's a really beautiful thing because you're not tied to the typeface that you have on your computer. And anyone that views the website can view it directly from the site on any device, meaning a tablet, a smartphone, it doesn't matter. And they would see this script, fancy Sacramento font. So that's the plus of using a web-based tool. So there we go, we switched out the picture. I wanna see something here though. I think I want to, uh, I want to, I want to get rid of at least, let's do this. I want to, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so that I can, I want to change the order of my picture and drag the one that I just put in there is number one in the gallery. So you can see that there's four pictures attached to that. So now my first picture is the new photo I added. So it makes this thing look totally different. But the beauty about this is, watch when I go to, and I'm just saving it every once in a while. The thing with Wix is it auto saves itself. I'm gonna go over to the mobile and look how beautiful it is. It automatically shrinks the gallery pictures down to this little size. I mean, it's so smart, this thing. Look at it, the gallery, it shrinks it to mobile when you switch to mobile and check this out, scan to view your published site on a mobile device. I mean, Wix is so smart. Like I really, I mean, it is amazing what you can do nowadays in a web-based template. I'm waiting for the iPad to come out with some app to make web design easy. Okay, so we're changing the index page. We're gonna change all four pages tonight. So you can see what redesigning a website looks like using Wix right from the template that we picked. So we change the site settings, we change the header, we tried to change the footer, but we don't, we didn't pay Wix, so it makes us still say Wix on it, but uh, that's okay. And now we change the top information of our page. So remember, we're still on index.html, we're just scrolling down here. And so now we're going to change this little information. So I'm going to click on this picture. And look at the information, it's all set right here. We can crop the image, we can add an animation. Look how easy a JavaScript animation is. This picture's static. I want it to, uh, wow, look at all the different options. Fold in, arc in, poof in, fly in, turn in. Uh, so let's see, let's do reveal. I always like reveal. And so now this image will reveal in. This is a tricky scripting command. Yes, it can be done. Yes, if you know what you're doing and know where to look and know where to copy and know where to paste. Yes, it's not that bad, but it's embedded in the menu for you as an animated process. If you wanted to link this picture, look how easy it is to add an href to the picture. I want that picture to go to our menu page because it looks really yummy. Click on the image, click on the link, chose, chose menu, chose current window, which means it will open right on top of itself and bada bing. What if I wanted that picture to be a Lightroom picture, right? I wanted it to have some cool attribute. You click on it and it becomes a ghosted image on top of the site. You just click on that. I mean, it's so easy. You want to make it an email link, you just click it on that. You want to make it a web address, you just click it on that. You want to make it move top to bottom of page, you just click on that. You want to attach a phone number to it. So if you have a little phone icon on your page and someone clicks on it, you can make it automatically pull up your phone number 
in, in your phone. So they just click on the phone icon and it dials your business for you. That's really easy to do here. That is not so easy to do when you're scripting it yourself. I mean, really easy stuff. So let's change the picture. Because if you're gonna use this tool as the tool to build your project, I want you to replace every picture. I don't want you to keep some of the pictures from the theme in it and just change the text. So for the sake of the process, we're gonna to go to the media for Wix, which means these are thousands of free pictures. So let's do the coffee. Let's go to coffee and I'm gonna do this one, choose that image and bada bing, that image changes to this picture. I mean, really easy. Okay, so now we gotta change this text. So it's a good idea to choose a website that has a lot of text because it makes changing it really easy. So I'm gonna highlight this text. I'm gonna copy it off of their site and I'm gonna put it right in this paragraph. Double click on it, paste and bada bing. There is all their information pasted in their format into this template's format, this template's text, this template's style, this template's font, this template's color, everything transferred from their site to this site. And so let's keep going. So I'm just on the home page and I'm just editing this template and you can edit it just like I am as you're kind of navigating through your site. Let's see what other information I have up here. I need to do this poor sad thing they got going on here. So craft coffee house, rotating wine list. So I've got to change this text to be this text. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go in here and paste it. Oh my goodness, it made it huge. I don't want it to be huge. I need it to be smaller. So let's go to paragraph font size. So let's get in here and change the size of this thing is enormous. Highlight this. Let's change it to paragraph one. And so it should make it nice and small for us. There it is. We're gonna keep the font color and all that good stuff. Really nice photo there. Uh, introducing pour over coffee. So I'm just gonna go into my site. All I'm doing is reformatting their site to this site. So let's do this. I'm gonna double click this, paste that text. Wine tasting, blah, 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 local live music. This is supposed to be follow us on social media, follow us on social media. All right, so that looks really nice. Scrolling down, order coffee. I'm gonna hit delete and click that box because we're not doing an order coffee. I didn't do an order page. I could have, could have just changed that text to say our menu. So I just did edit undo and I'm gonna change that to our menu. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna click on the link because the link was pointing to about us. I wanna point it to our menu in the current window. And so you really can't break this thing. You click on it and you click on the menus. I mean, there really isn't, you really can't break this thing. And if you put a picture you don't like, you replace it with another picture. The beauty about the theme the kind of the same way it was when we switched out the movie posters. And I said, just put whatever size poster you want in your images folder because the div container was already a certain proportion. All of these boxes are already certain proportions. You really can't break it. You're just copying and pasting or editing the text and the images to be uniquely to you. And so I got one more block of text here to edit and I'll be done with the home page. Let's see what else they have on this site that I can do to make this thing a little bit better. Anything, anything here? I think I'm gonna take the address and the hours and put it down here and do check us out period and just do our business info 
And then right here, I'm gonna paste in that info, paste that, and then I can get rid of this text, right? This is just like Word, highlight, copy, paste, edit, which means I then have to remove it from up here because I added it to the bottom of here. So let's just take this and delete that. All right. So I'm gonna, okay, last element on my home page. I've got a contact mailing form. So check this out. This is a really complicated subscription form. It's a box, it has settings. So take a look at this, form settings. If we were a paid subscription, we could set up email and notifications, create an email campaign, manage our subscribers, all from this little form. Very difficult process, but not hard in Wix. Look at this, add a new field. If I wanted to collect more information than just their email, I can pick things like uh, their phone number if I wanted, or just their last name, or I could do their address or their birthday. What if I wanted to add a mailing list and I wanted to collect their birthday because on their birthday, I wanted to send them an email with a coupon for a free coffee. I click on this field, I click on birthday and it collects their birthday information. I mean, it's a really smart system for creating websites with embedded complex features. And all you have to know is how to click and change. Okay. So let's preview this thing, see what it looks like. Welcome to Downtown Coffee. It's got a gallery. Okay, there is my swipe in of that image. Here is my information. Everything is updated. It's 8.03. I've already built my DWT and changed my entire homepage. We've done that in a little over an hour. So now back to the editor. That's the thing before you know you're spending, having so much fun doing it, all of a sudden you're just spent two hours on it. Oh yeah. You don't even realize it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I had a friend that I was helping out that owned a business and I set up a template for them and I let them go in and play. And they're like, why don't you come by and have a drink and we'll work on the last couple of pages. It was like 2 a.m. I was still at my buddy's house and we had edited like four or five pages, but you start switching out pictures, adding menus. I mean, you start going crazy in a hurry. I mean, so at some point, we probably should have penciled in what we wanted to do before we started, and it would have kept us controlled with what we were doing. Instead, we were having a lot of fun, and we were just messing around, but okay. All right, so let's get in, and we're going to edit some more pages, and then I want to show you some of the ad features over here on the left-hand side, because there are some cool ad features over here on the left-hand side that are fun to play with once you have your template built. You want to have your template and your pages populated before you start going in and tinker around with adding elements, but it's very easy to add elements. Okay, so let's get in here and let's go to the location page. So I'm gonna click on that and go to a location page. And now I'm in, in essence, location.html. Very easy to understand now that we have built sites one page at a time. Now it's just a drop down menu to get us there, right? Same scenario. We could change the background image by clicking on that image and doing change strip image. And look at all the strip images that are already available because Wix has already built the strip as a thing. So look at all these things. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's really smart, this system. So I'm gonna do coffee shop to see if I get an interior picture. Oh, look at these. All right, so let's see what we got here. Oh, this looks like my kind of coffee shop. I'm picking this one. Look at this one. So it's got the trendy bikes. It's got the little coffee bar over here. Look at the fancy digital sign with the plus milk, medium, $4. Wow, this is an expensive place. Plus milk, $4. Lordy, cold brew, $4.50. Anyone drink cold coffee in here? Cold brew, anybody? No. I'm not really a cold coffee kind of guy. Even in the summertime when it's 100 degrees outside, I drink hot coffee. 
I did admire Starbucks the other day with the nitro coffee where they have a handle like they were doing for beer and it's like nitrogen charged coffee. I was talking to the barista. I'm like, man, one of these days I'm going to order one of those, but my heart will probably go to 2000 beats a minute because it's like crazy how strong that stuff is. It's like uh, espresso shots, but like times four, I think he said. Okay, so visit our, it's not really a shop. It's, it's more, well, it is a shop. It's not shops, but visit our uh, hip location. Uh, not location, let's go with like spot or something so we can make it sound cool and trendy. Check out our hip spot. Now the beauty about this is all the fonts are picked, all the size, everything. Okay, now this is a plugin for Google Maps. So you see this little map right here? If I do preview, this little map here flags the location of the barista. It's right here, it's already there. So we're gonna go in and edit the location of this thing. I think I clicked and dragged it by mistake. So we gotta move it back over there. It's over there. So let's go in here. Now we don't have more than one location. We only have one location. So I gotta get rid of these other ones. I'm gonna click and delete any of the extra ones we have here. So we got rid of that one. I gotta get rid of this container which will then make my location snap forward. So we're in good shape there. So now I've got to get in here and change the location. So where's the location of ours? It's old 41, but what does their location page say? Oh, they have an animation for the word location at least. All right, so there's theirs. So I've got to copy this information over. So I need downtown Bonita Springs. So let's copy that. Let's double click on San Francisco here and make it downtown Bonita Springs. Address is okay, so we gotta copy this. Look how smart this is. I mean, it's like, it's already ready-made. I mean, it's like the most amazing thing. It already says hours, so I just have to copy their hours. It already formats itself. So let's paste that there, so there we go. Now, when you click on a plugin, which is what this is, this is called a Google Maps HTML plugin. Take a look at this. It already has the settings embedded in it. So here's the address right here. You can change the title to downtown coffee. Let's change the address to this. Just have to put a comma in there. And so there it is. Look how it automatically updates itself. It's completely dynamic. Description, hip coffee shop. If I wanted to add a link, I could add a link to go to their web address. So right here, so what's their web address? So let's just make a link to downtown coffee. So let's go to the homepage, copy that. HTTP, like that www downtown coffee. Oh, it already added the TTPS for us. That's nice of them. All right, so now the map has a link so we can click on that little link. Look at this. I mean, it's like unbelievable what this thing does. The plugin is already changed to their address. Look at that. Everything over here, we copied and pasted. It's completely dynamic. So you can zoom out, zoom in change it, close the little thing if we want to. There's the Everglades Wonder Garden. Wow, Benita Springs Dog Park even made the map. If you have a dog, that's a really cool place. All right, back to the editor. All right, so we're good there. All right, so we edited page number two. So we're out of there. So let's go into our menu. Page number three. So let's get into here. Let's see what their menu looks like. Oh, look at them with the animations. Oh my gosh, look at this big paper clip that they put up here. Somebody that knew very little about web design, but knew just a little bit about web design, put this really ugly big paper clip there. That's it. 
that that that's what you get. So let's click on the paper clip. Oh, look at them go. They made a little JPEG of the two pages of their menu, and they pointed it to this very ugly, really bad copy that probably the prices aren't even accurate anymore. This is the reason why small business needs a designer. Look at this thing, it's a train wreck. It's what keep, keeps me in business. Uh, okay, all right, so just for the sake of the process, we're gonna link to this. So I'm just gonna copy it. I'm gonna go into here, check out our menu, and I'm gonna, let's add a link here. So let's do, let's click on our menu and let's see what we got here. We have animations, text, edit text. So under our menu, we're gonna add a link. So we're gonna edit that text. We're gonna click on this little link box. We're gonna do a web address. We're gonna paste in their web address into a new window and do done. And look at how fancy ours is, preview, check our menu, click on that, and voila, it opens their PDF. So they're gonna think we're a genius. Check out, we need to edit this. Check out our menu. All right, I could go in here and edit every single thing of their menu and make it the prices of theirs. I'm gonna scroll down here and make sure we're not missing anything else. All right, so we're done with our menu. Boy, we're flying right through this thing. Let's save it and let's click done. And remember, if we click publish, that's my URL, right? This is my URL, so it is live for the world to see. If you were to email me or submit this link, look at what I see. I see everything I have done to this site, active and live and good to go. All right, so let's close that, click done. All right, so what do we got last? We have about us. All right, so let's get into about us. But the theme is so intact. All right, so about us. So let's see what it says on there about us page. Locally owned and operated, yada, yada, yada. Oh, look, it's proud partners. Oh, black tulip coffee made out of Naples. I knew they did that. Oh, farmer Mike, should you pick it? Okay, uh, so. Let's uh, scroll down. All right. Uh, so we have to change this text. So ours for us is about. So let's do about mm, downtown coffee, CNW, just so I can keep with their hip little thing they were doing about CNW. Now, Let's get in here and see what they have going on. I wanna get rid of some of this stuff because this isn't what I need. This is like uh, they did an orders thing. So I'm gonna click on this order online, which actually is a system that is clickable that Wix has in it. So if you were a paid subscriber, you could set up your own online ordering system and it will collect credit card information and everything. It's a really genius thing, but I don't need that. So I'm gonna get rid of this thing. So it's actually asking me if I wanna delete the embedded information. So let's go here and, oh, well, this one's really fancy. It already has the menu built in. Like, look at this thing. Something you should know inside of these web-based tools that offer these things. Look at this, get free DoorDash drive delivery in May. Enjoy free deliveries in May, then use the delivery integration to keep fulfilling at $6.99. Man, this thing is like so smart. Like it has an order system already built into it. So if you were a paid subscriber, you could just, I mean, it's tied to DoorDash. I mean, it's so genius. 
you can add your own products, manage your system, and it appears right here and they can order and it comes right to you and you fulfill the order and then the DoorDash guy comes and picks it up. I mean, it's really a seamless, impressive integration in order to do that. So, okay. We've edited our pages. So now I'm gonna go back to the homepage or the index page, because I wanna talk a bit a little bit because the clicking of each page, renaming the pages, pretty self-explanatory. You click on the object, the object has settings, and then you go into the settings. So if I wanted to click on this picture, right? Manage the media, pick the gallery pictures and add to the media. I can actually add my own pictures if I wanted to. I can click on that and I can drag a picture right in here and add to the gallery. I mean, everything is pretty self-explanatory. That's actually a beautiful picture though. Uh, it makes the type look really nice. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. And now because we built our own pages, we understand the basic wireframe and all of that good stuff. We understand the header and the footer and the content information area. We understand all the basics here. So that part of it is very nice. But now we need to get into and see some of the additional features that are available inside of any environment. So we're gonna click on the add button and take a look at all of the things you can add as div ID items, floating containers that you can put on any page and move around any way you want to. Look at the list of things you can add. A strip image, you can add your own text and your own text in the pre-formatted H1 through H6 and paragraph settings. I mean, it's all in these menu items. So let's say I'm looking at the homepage right here and it says, welcome to downtown coffee and wine, but I wanna add another text box. So I'm just gonna click on add. I'm gonna to go to text. Here's my theme text. So let me say, I just wanna add some more script. Look at what it does. It gives me a container. Look at this thing. I did add and look, it adds it in its own format in the CSS that's already set up that I can change it. So let's go in here and do this place rocks, exclamation point. And I wanna highlight this text and I wanna make it white. It's already in H4. It already has everything I need. Look at this thing. I mean, it's completely, I mean, it's crazy. I can just move this anywhere I want. As long as I stay inside the template, I can put this thing anywhere I want. There's no paragraph tags. There's no line break tags. There's nothing. It's a free floating object. Look if I save it and I preview it, preview it. Look, it's right there. It just floats above the gallery exactly where I put it. I mean, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. It just automatically drops that item and it removes it from the mobile because that text isn't text that appears in the mobile version. I mean, it's so smart. I mean, you literally can put an object wherever you want. So I decided I wanna put, let's find a box. I wanna put a box. And I wanna make the box gray. So here it is. I can make it any size I want. So I gotta make a stripe right here in gray. And I've decided I'm gonna right click on this text and I'm gonna move it to front. So watch what happens. I can put it right in this container. Let's edit the text color. Let's make it brown again. So that was the theme color. So there it is. I can now change the container size. Preview it. Look. I mean, it's literally draw whatever you want on the page. There's no div tag. There's no C H4 tag. There's no making a container, a TD, a TR, any table features, anything that has to be scripted. It just is draw how you like. I mean, it's really crazy. So let's go down here 
And I think I want to add, let's see what else I want to add here. So let's go in here and I want to add, mm, let's add, let's add a little basic shape. Look at this thing. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take a look at the settings here. Uh, let's link it to uh, a page. So let's link it to this little shape. We're going to link to, I think it would be cool to be a uh, menu. Let's do that. So that's good. Uh, we can animate it if we want. So let's bounce the shape in. Let's edit the color and let's make the color brown. Let's change the opacity. Let's add a border. Let's make the border thick. Let's add a shadow. Let's make the shadow big. Change the blur, make that big. Oh, I gotta change the opacity back because the opacity needs to be 100%. Look at this little thing. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It has a link attached to it now. So now watch when I do a text box. Text, uh, let's do uh, header six. So here it is. I'm gonna shrink this down. So this is where a little bit of design comes into play if you are a visual person. Because now I'm gonna change this text to white. I'm gonna move it up here. Watch me preview it. It launches to the menu page. I mean, I literally just drew the shape on the index page, pick the color of it, there it is, put the text over the top of it, and I made another link. So let's take a look at some other things we can add. And you see this little line right here? This is called a line break. So all of these things are preset in line breaks, which is what this is. They call it a strip. But in essence, it's a line break. The reason line breaks are important is because in mobile, it moves the items so they all fit in their individual chunks. So you don't have to know the TD and TR of each container. All you're doing is making sure that you put the element so that it is contained inside of the strip or line break that you're working on. And so, I think I wanna put a little video or a little something down here. So let's go over to add and let's go to embed code. So let's go to embed code and let's go to embed HTML. So we're gonna embed HTML. Look at this little window that pops up. So remember when we did the iframe, let's go over to YouTube. So I'm gonna go over here and let's go new window, YouTube. And I wonder if they have a video of downtown coffee and wine, Bonita Springs. I bet they were interviewed at some point in time. They haven't been interviewed? Oh, come on. Wow, we need to get somebody out there and get them. Oh, well, here's a guy performing outside of there and he put his own video up. Well, we're gonna have to settle for a video of all the cool things happening in downtown. Look at this, this was posted two weeks ago, Florida flip-flops, you learned something. See the downtown coffee and wine company and pottery is art. So they were mentioned in here. So let's go to share, right? Share, embed, and we're gonna copy the iframe information, just like we did when we did it in our My First web page. But watch the difference, instead of having to code it, I'm gonna, enter code and I'm gonna paste my iframe. Looky here. How crazy is this? I'm gonna move the video over here so you can see how easy it is. This is the size of the video. So I'm just gonna drop it in right here. 
I'm gonna overlap the text. You wanna see something really crazy? So this video is embedded now because I did add embed code HTML. That's all I did, add embed code HTML. And this video is sitting there. Look how easy it is. So watch when I preview. This thing's live. I mean, it literally, and look at what it's doing. It's overlapping the photo in the template. So this box is floating on top of that. So watch what happens. What if I decided I wanted to bring this to front? Look, it's in front of the video. Watch what happens when I preview. It covers the video. This template doesn't even care. You could just stack stuff on top of each other. The type is behind it. Watch if I click on this type and I do bring to front. It writes the words over the video. Preview, play. Look at this. I mean, it's the craziest thing. It's like stacking pieces of paper. So now I have to move this video back to front. So I did this for Keep Lee County Beautiful inside of their WordPress theme because they had a video talking about their company and they had no idea how to post it. They had an MP4 file, in essence. They had a video file. And they're like, how can we get this on our website? And I said, it'll take us five minutes. They're like, five minutes? We've been struggling like for this for years. I said, open up a YouTube channel. Okay, open up a YouTube channel. Embed your video about your company in YouTube. Okay, embed it in video and company in YouTube. All right, go to share, go to HTML, copy the code, and let's go into WordPress. Theirs is in WordPress. And let's go to add embed code, add embed code. I did it over the phone with them. And this was a, the lady who runs the company. She has no idea about web design. All right, now paste the code you just copied from YouTube into that container that you put in WordPress, all right? Voila, video immediately embedded on their website. It took them a year and a half to know how to do that. Well, I wasn't on the board before then, so they didn't have anyone to show them how to do it. But they were able to take a video that was professionally shot, put it on their own YouTube channel, and using a basic embed HTML tag, they were able to put a dynamic video. Do they need the video on their website? It's not embedded, it's not stored in their images source fold folder, it's on YouTube. What does YouTube do? It makes it the best quality it can. It stores the video on their server. It loads quickly on your website and it makes it really easy to plug and play. And that's all I did right there. Plug and play. Very easy. So let's scroll down a little bit further. What else can we add to this website? So let's go to add. Let's take a look at the list. Um, let's do Let's add a button. So maybe, so let's go here. It's already in my themes. Look at how they theme the buttons already. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, let's do that. Look, it added a button. Oh, let's edit the button. Let's name it uh, 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 locations. Let's add a link. Let's choose the page locations. Done, close. Um, let's animate it. Let's make it float in. Let's, now the design's okay. We don't need to change that. I mean, it's crazy. So let's do that one. Done. So now we have our button. It links. Let's go to preview. There's our animated button. You click on it, it goes to locations. I mean, it's so very, very easy. So everyone that the first two and a half weeks was like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna be able to design a web page. I don't understand the elements. I don't know what's going on. We've now hopefully connected the dots between the terminology we used with Dreamweaver and building a five page website and what you can do in a web tool like this, using all the same terminology, all the same stuff, we're just doing it in a much more user-friendly environment.
So I'm just clicking around and I'm adding elements so you can see how easy it is. And you can play around with your own elements, your own stuff very easily. Now, somewhere on here is social media. So let's go find that because we need to make sure our social media, here they are right here, social. So you see these little icons, set social links. Each one of these icons, which Wix already has images of, have their own links to them. So if they, so let's see if they have social media. Yeah, they have Facebook. So if I click on that, this is their Facebook link. So watch if I go to my website and I add Facebook, there it is right there. Here's my icon and I add a link, which is their link. All right, so Instagram, I think they have Instagram also. So let's go to Instagram. Here's Instagram, so copy that. Everything is just clicking menus. I mean, it's very, very easy. So let's click on that. Let's update their link, make it their link. We gotta get rid of Twitter because they don't have Twitter. I actually think I might need to edit the icon and see if they have a Facebook white icon. Let's go to Facebook, they do. Here it is right here. So we'll pick that one. So now it's nice and seamless like the other one. And so look at that, Facebook and Instagram. We replaced them ourselves. Let's preview it. Each one of these icons goes to their page. Bada bing, bada boom, back to the editor. Now, let's say that we needed to put weather on our homepage. Like people want to know if they can go to their shop and get coffee outside. They need to know what the weather is like there. And you can grab any HTML weather widget and you can embed it in this site the same way we embedded the YouTube video. So let's go out on the web and I'm going to do new window and I'm going to do weather widget HTML because that's really the key to the term. And take a look at this. The very first one that pops up is weatherwidget.io. So I'm gonna click on that link and look at the top of this page right here. Here's a weather widget. So I'm gonna do a Stero, Florida. Let's see if it finds it. Stero, Florida. So it updated the information. So take a look at this weather widget. It's really crazy. It's right here. So let's make sure we get code. So we're gonna copy it to the clipboard and close it. And watch, if I go on my website, design, and I do add embed code, HTML code, edit the code, and I'm gonna paste the weather widget in. Update. And look at this. I can add weather to my site just by finding an HTML widget. That's the name, HTML widget. And it's completely dynamic. I mean, it's really just crazy if you know a little bit. And that's why we spend so much time. Look at this, the gallery scrolls behind it. I mean, it's just crazy. All of this is dynamic. The struggle is real with learning basic HTML. The struggle is real with understanding what the elements of a wireframe consist of. The struggle is real understanding that a DWT file is a template that drives the header and the footer of a website. The struggle is real to know that the CSS is the code behind the scenes that determines the behavior of the site, the columns, the colors, the H1s, the H2s, the H3s, it formats the entire site. All of that is the struggle is real. But in terms of understanding that, now you see that all of those elements exist right here. 
everything that we coded in CSS is in the menu right here. Embedding HTML as iframe is a plugin right here under edit code. Bringing in a YouTube video like this is embed code HTML. Replacing images by clicking on the image and doing change image is the same as us saving an image into our images folder and changing the image source in HTML. Adding a link to this picture is the same as doing an href tag inside of our HTML to an image tag. Target equals is this right here. Target equals nothing is current window. Target equals blank is new window. All of the code and all of the information we were learning the first two and a half weeks is embedded in this site. It's just now it's a menu, not a writing code in a triangular relationship between an HTML file, a DWT file, and a CSS file. Is there still a public HTML folder on Wix? Yes, we just don't see it. Is there still an images folder on Wix? Yes, we just don't see it as an images folder. Is there still a scripting folder with CSS in it and JavaScript? Yes, we just don't see it. It's embedded in the animation icon. Everything we did in Dreamweaver exists here. We just don't see the public HTML folder. But you see this little tag right up here called developer mode. Look at what it says. Developer load mode allows you to edit your own JavaScript. It allows you to edit the code inside Wix the same way we would do it in Dreamweaver. So if you are good with code, you can customize your theme or your template inside Wix, just like you do inside Dreamweaver. That's how businesses build an entire business off using WordPress as a theme. There are web companies that make multi-million dollars a year designing websites for major companies, major government organizations, major everything using WordPress. Did they build the theme? No. Did they develop the CSS per se? No. Do they have access to the public HTML folder? No. But you know what they do have access to? the developer side of WordPress. WordPress has a developer side too. So they can take a WordPress theme and fully customize it for a client, but still use the platform, which is called WordPress. Why do you think the White House uses WordPress? They have a WordPress developer on staff. They use the leveraging tools of WordPress, all the embedded plugins, all the embedded features, all the embedded animations, all of the embedded menus that drive WordPress. The only difference is they work in developer mode where they have access to copying and pasting their own script into the theme. So yes, they're using a theme tool. Yes, they're leveraging all the plugins. Yes, they're leveraging open source. Yes, they're leveraging all of the tools that WordPress has for it. But honestly, they're using WordPress. The only difference is they have a developer that is editing code behind the scenes in a more manual process. But anyone can do it with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of exploration. So you cannot break this. All you do is go back in and change it. The beauty about this is you don't have to recopy a file into any of the folders and start from scratch again. It's all right here. If I didn't like the text I put in it, I delete it. If I didn't like the container I put in, I delete it. If I don't like the HTML plugin I put in, I delete it. I mean, it's really, oh, I didn't wanna delete that, right? It's very easy to go in and manipulate this stuff. If I didn't like this as an H4, I can go in and make it an H3, just as easy as that. I don't have to go to CSS. I don't have to format anything. I don't have to go into code. I don't have to do anything crazy. It's a menu. 
But the reason it's easy is because we spent the time learning the basic elements of web design. I know the struggle is real and I know you wanna pull your hair out at times, but boy, it has made it a lot easier for me to explain this tool that is much easier to use than Dreamweaver. So I'm gonna save this. I'm going to publish it. And remember, this is the URL. So if you choose next week to build your final project, because we're gonna build a project in class, you choose to use Wix as your tool, please remember that in order for me to grade your project, I need to have access to this URL. And I need to make sure you click this publish button in order to publish it. You should be able to build your four pages or so website using the movie file or the Wix template in the window of class time. It's not a hard process now that we've done it a few times. It's just an organizational process. But I need this. See how it's live? I need it published and I need that URL for your final project in order for me to be able to see it. Look how nice this looks. I think I did a pretty good job. I think this is way better than what they currently have. And maybe I can get some free coffee for doing it. That would be awesome on top of itself. So let me go ahead and click done. This tool is a great tool. It took me a little over two hours, two hours and 15 minutes to kind of talk about it a little bit, explore it, play with it. You have access to, at, to this at home, on your phone, on a tablet, on a computer. You do not need Dreamweaver. You do not need any HTML editors. You do not need anything. All you need is a web connection and a browser to view it. This would be a really good tool over the weekend to tinker around and play with because next week we are going to do our final project and you have two options on your final project. I am going to give you a list of businesses and it is gonna be a broad range list of businesses. You're gonna to have to pick one of the business types and build a couple of pages of a website for me. You have two options for building that website. The first is you can use Wix or any web-based website tools to build your project. Some students have Squarespace experience. Some have tinkered around in WordPress before. Some have seen nothing and Wix is the first tool they've used. If you wanna use a web-based tool like this, please practice it before you come to class because you're gonna need to build it in class and you don't need software to play with this tool. 50% of the 10 students in your, in your class will choose this technique. The other 50% will make a copy of the movie's zip file and they will take the HTML files and they will edit them for a client, just like we did for the movie site. 50% of the class will still do that. And I know that sounds shocking, but 50% will. It always is around 50-50 because we edited the HTML files in Dreamweaver and everyone's kind of comfortable with that. I Almost every student has built the movie out of book project already. And they all look totally different. Some are blue, some are red, some are green. Some changed the font to the header to be block text. Some kept the script. I mean, the sites are all completely different. Everyone that has submitted has done great with that. You may choose next week to pick one of the businesses out of the list I give you and build your web pages in that template. If you choose that process, you have to give me the zip file. Do not give me just the HTML files. So next week, when we have our final project, you have two options. One is to build it in Dreamweaver using our zip file that we already used for our other project. Please make sure you give it back to me in zip file. Or you have the option of using a web tool like Wix to build your solution. Don't go tweaking and looking around inside the assignments for the final project, because the one that's in there, I always change the list of the companies Sunday night around midnight. So Sunday night at midnight, I will publish the description of the companies that you can pick from the subject matter for our project, for our final project. So 
by Sunday night at midnight, you'll be able to look at the list and pick a company. I would recommend two things. One is I would recommend if you're going to use Wix or a cloud-based tool, play around with it. Play around with the tool. Make sure that you're comfortable with where things are in different themes. And number two, I would look early next week at the list and pick something so that you have a plan, so that you have maybe a website that you can look at information and take information from, like we did with this horrible site for downtown coffee and wine company. I would pick a company and research a little bit before you come to class because you need to A, have a platform you're gonna build it in and B, have some information already gathered to make it easier for you. If you're using Dreamweaver, does that mean download some pictures already so you have pictures of the client you wanna do? That's probably a good idea. Does it mean copying some text and putting it in a Word document or something so you have the text so when you build your site, it's a little bit easier? Probably a good idea. With that being said, I've had students come and sit down for the last class, literally have an idea, but have collected no information. And in three hours, they built their pages. So it's not a deal breaker, but the more time you spend gathering things, the less time you have designing and formatting. And in a class where we're creating a website that hopefully is a functional website, you want to have as much time as you can designing and formatting it so you're not spending a bunch of time researching stuff. You can always see the final project of students who had no plan. The ones that had a plan, it normally comes out a little bit better. And do remember the final project is 20% of the final grade. So it all adds up. If you don't do great building your final project, it can be the difference between an A and a B minus. It can be the difference between an A minus and a B minus or C plus. All the points add up. So make sure that you have a plan coming into the last class. We've spent a lot of time practicing different things. Hopefully outside of class, you spent a little time practicing things. 50% of the class will use Wix. 50% of the class will make a copy of the movie folder and replicate the process. It's not a big final project. I traditionally do three or four pages. We just edited three or four pages in here in two hours. If you were using the Dreamweaver template, you could easily edit three or four pages in two or three hours. Some spent a lot of time on the movie folder. And so they already are very intimately comfortable with the movie folder. And that's why they pick that to build their final project. But Sunday night at midnight, roughly, I will turn on the final project. That also means that we have until next Sunday night at midnight to submit anything you haven't submitted. Remember, you get full points for anything you submit all the way up to the end of the semester. So if anything is outstanding or anything you didn't finish or anything you're still working on, you can give it to me all the way up until next Sunday night at midnight. And honestly, if you send me an email that Sunday night at midnight doesn't really work for you, I really don't have to submit my grades till Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. So I will give you Monday too, if you need it, to submit assignments. We have 10 students in the class. Everyone's doing pretty good. Everyone's submitting things or in the process of submitting things. So I'm not overly worried about it. I don't wanna trick you. I don't wanna make it hard. I wanna make sure that you're learning a skill that you hopefully someday might want to apply in some way, shape or form. But please don't not do something because I make it easy-ish for you in giving you four weeks to complete everything. But if you skip a discussion board or two, you skip a project or two, if you take a look at the grade book and the total number of points, the difference between an A minus and a B plus is not doing any discussion boards. Or if you just skip all the discussion boards, you could switch your grade from an A minus to a B plus. If you skip the out of book project two, which is in essence completing the out of book project one, it could be the difference between an A and a B plus because it's a hundred points. So don't skip anything. I know it's easy to say I got behind, I can't do it. 
you, we're, we're in a binge world, right? Netflix binging environment. If you have to just binge for a few days and try to get the assignments completed so that we have a maximum number of points. I will have someone phone in the final project and they will go from an A minus to a C plus. And I hate giving a student a C when they were good up until the end of the class and they just didn't do it. But honestly, there are some majors and some classes at Hodges that if you don't do the final project, you don't pass at all. So don't be the student that doesn't do a good job on the final project, right? We've got the time, we have the effort. If you're nervous, do the final project first and then go back and do the projects that maybe you got a little behind on, right? Make sure you do the final project because it is 20% of the grade and then go back. If I turn it on Sunday night at midnight and on Monday you go in and build your whole project and show up at class and your whole project is all done, you can use the lab time to work on your projects you didn't finish that weren't the final. If you come in and build, have already built your final project and you show up here at 630 and we critique it and I maybe have a suggestion to tweak a few things, when you're done, you're done. If you have all your assignments submitted and you finished your final project and we give it a thumbs up, a stamp of approval, you're done. So it's really good to kind of pre-plan and kind of spend the time. This is a TEC course, so it's open all week long. So when I turn on that project, you could kind of work on your final and come in and just get it critiqued if you want to. And I have some students that will show up and they'll just do the project in class and I'll walk around. During the class, I'm gonna walk around and see what you guys are working on, give you a little bit of advice, give you a little bit of confidence boost, a little bit of direction. So the critique's gonna happen no matter what, but please don't leave anything hanging out there um, so that we can get everything done. There's only 10 students in here. We should have everyone do really well. I mean, we have access to the resources and everything we need. So it is nine o'clock almost. I'm gonna end the recording. You can continue to play in Wix if you want to. You can continue to do work on projects or whatever you're working on. Uh, just know that next week is our final project. So there won't be any guidance per se from me working on things that aren't the final project. I want you guys to concentrate on that because it's 20% of the grade. So if you're working on anything during the week, make sure you send any questions or anything you need a little extra help with. Make sure you send it to me earlier in the week. Students in the class have been very good about asking questions and working through stuff. Make sure you reach out to me so that you don't get behind the eight ball and you have a bunch of stuff to do from Thursday to Sunday. I try to space it out in a way that you can work on it. So uh, I'm gonna end the lecture here. I'm gonna end the recording so I can post it in the announcement section and you guys can work on projects as you need to from now on.